Filament drawing is a topic we've discussed many times over the years, and for good reason. 3D printing and moisture just don't mix. From poor print quality to affecting a part's integrity, dealing with hygroscopic thermoplastics can be a huge pain. Living in California and now southern Idaho, I've been pretty lucky compared to others living in a more humid climate, but I still deal with humidity issues, especially when printing with specific materials. Sunlu contacted me August of last year to see if I was interested in testing their new filament dryer called the S4. Although I was intrigued with a few things about it, after being told it was going to be crowdfunded, I decided to hold off. Well, the Kickstarter was successful, all backer orders were fulfilled, and they reached out again, so this time I said yes. In today's video, we'll be diving into the Sunlu Filadryer S4. We'll go over its specs, how it has performed, and I will share my overall thoughts with you based on my time with it so far. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Starting with the what, the Filadryer S4 is the latest dryer offering from Sunlu, with its biggest standout being its size. With a footprint of 458 by 218 by 312 millimeters, this is the largest dryer I've seen outside of the industrial space. This size allows it to hold up to four 1 kg spools at a time. At its core, it's using a PTC heater combined with three fans to generate and circulate the warm air inside. The temp range you can set is 35 to 70 Celsius, which will have you covered for just about everything up through nylons. For anyone wanting to feed filament directly from the dryer into the printer, there are a total of eight exit ports. The S4 comes with two long PTFE tubes and a handful of shorter ones, but if you needed more, you could easily source them. The dryer sits on two long feet that initially gave me some concern for this whole unit potentially tipping over, but thanks to them using little small grippy parts on them and the weight of the unit, especially combined with the filament, it's pretty secure. Inside the dryer, there are four sets of spool stands that rotate freely on bearings. There's also two compartments for adding desiccant. I don't really see the appeal of having desiccant in a dryer unless you plan on storing filament in here at times when you're just not running the dryer actively. Interfacing with the dryer is done through the touchscreen on the side that's very similar to the one on the S2 unit we previously looked at. From here, you can set the dryer temp, switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius, swap the dryer status LEDs to off and on, cycle through filament temp presets, adjust the humidity sensing, and set the mode. The status LEDs have a pulsing effect while the dryer is heating, and then go solid green when the temperature is reached. These will kick on and off as the dryer works to maintain its set temperature. There are six different filament profiles that come with set values, but you can raise or lower them as you see fit. For the modes, mode one is the default time controlled mode. This means that the dryer is on for the duration of the time you set and afterwards it turns off. For mode two, it uses the time that you set at first and then it uses the humidity setting to turn on and off allowing it to maintain a value less than your target humidity. I don't mind the screen, but I don't love that anytime you touch anything on it, it makes a fairly loud beeping sound. Luckily, once you have your temp set, you shouldn't really have to mess around with it, but I really wish they had included an off option for that beep. On the topic of noise, this is the noisiest dryer that I've used, which is largely due to those three fans that are blowing around the air inside of the unit. From about one foot away, the noise ranged from approximately 50 to 60 decibels. In a garage or shop, it's no big deal, but if this is going in the office with you and noise is an issue, it's something that you'll need to consider. As for testing, I grabbed a few spools of material that are normally the ones that I have moisture issues with. These were a couple year old spool of Prusament PETG, a similarly aged TPU, PVA, which is one of the most hygroscopic materials I've ever seen, and an almost empty roll of carbon fiber nylon. I printed a Cali Dragon with each of them, then threw them in the dryer one at a time at their temp range for six hours each and printed the Cali Dragon a second time using the exact same G-code. Well, I was pretty disappointed with the results. Not that the dryer didn't dry the filament, but the print quality that I got with the open filaments before drying were much better than I had actually expected. If I handed the wet print and the dry print to someone and said, tell me which is which, the differences are so subtle, I don't think you'd be able to tell. 
Out of the filaments I printed with, PVA had the most visible difference when being extruded. The wet PVA had bubbles visible in the filament as I purged it through the nozzle, while the dry PVA did not. However, the print quality between the two doesn't show an impactful difference. Because of my dry climate, I went ahead with the sponge test. For this, I took a new sponge weighing 10 grams and wet it. The wet sponge weighed 40 grams going into the dryer, and having the dryer set at its maximum 70 Celsius, I checked back an hour later. When I weighed the sponge after an hour, it was down to 20 grams, so I placed it in for a second hour. This time, when I waited, the sponge was between 8 and 9 grams and completely dry. Arguably drier than before I even wet it in the first place. I did notice some moisture buildup on the walls inside the dryer. One thing I wish this dryer had was at least some vents that you can open and close to let the moisture escape. I let the dryer sit for another hour and the moisture buildup inside was completely gone, but I still feel vents would make the dryer a bit more efficient. As for power consumption, the specs state 330 watts as the max input. I recently picked up a power meter, so I figured that we could confirm this. During the initial heating sequence from being off, it hit just south of 300 watts, and as the machine fluctuated from above target temp to below, this can fluctuate from anything under 50 watts, then quickly spike back up to 300C as the heater kicks back on full blast. After a recent video review I did on a filament dryer and hearing some discussion about potentially some dryers melting filament, I wanted to do a little bit of investigating with my thermal camera. What I found was that the temperature beneath the fans where the PTC heater is was often 20 Celsius higher than the requested temperature on the screen. However, when I measured temps from where the filament would be sitting, it was pretty spot on to the set temp. PVA is a fairly low melting temp filament, and part of the reason I wanted to dry it was, well, one, it's very hygroscopic, but two, that I could test this to see if I ran into any issues. I'm happy to report that my PVA did not melt or fuse together. I'd still exercise caution, especially with there not being a plate to deflect heat coming out of the fans away from your spool, but it seems like the volume of air that the S4 moves quickly cycles any air that would be coming out warmer. It's still not a bad idea to confirm this before you load the dryer up with your four favorite spools of filament, especially if you plan on keeping them in this dryer for multiple days or some long extent of time. Due to the size of the S4, I was hoping to finally be able to use it with some of the larger IC3D spools I have, but it looks like I'll be waiting a bit longer. Suddenly let me know that there is a printable mod available that extends the top cover, but it requires cutting part of the lid, and based on my slicer, it's going to take a few kilograms of material to print out. This feels like a missed opportunity, and had they not had that crossbar, I would have gladly paid for an add-on that allows me to increase the height of this so I can throw some of those bigger spools that I have inside of here. So what are my overall thoughts on this dryer? Well, for $160, this is a lot of dryer, especially for somebody that needs this much dryer. I've seen some larger units out there, but they are priced a few times higher than this. I wish the unit didn't beep, that the fans were a little quieter, and that there was a vent, but the sheer volume of air that the S4 moves is impressive. If you're someone that just needs to dry out the occasional spool of filament, this is going to be complete overkill, and there are a lot of other great options out there, especially single spool or even dual spool dryers that we've covered on this channel that will be just a fraction of the price. But if you're doing heavy amounts of printing or you're in more of a production environment, being able to dry for one kilogram spools at a time and keep them dry is pretty sweet. And that has been the Phila Dryer S4. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. If you do have any additional questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. As always, if I don't know the answer to your question, I have no problem reaching out directly to the manufacturer to try to get that answer for you. Also, if you have a feature that you would like to see in a filament dryer that's something you have not seen out there, let me know there as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts and sort of what you're looking for. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. If you do want to support the channel further, I will have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.